Welcome back to module 2 of object oriented analysis and design. Uh, in the earlier part of this module, we have uh, talked about uh, industrial strength software, the software which is complex, large, uh, resource constraint, needs a lot of people to develop and so on. And we are focusing on the requirements of development design analysis of such software. And we have uh, noted that uh, the software is a very complex phenomenon and the complexity comes from four different elements of which two elements we have discussed the complexity that arise from the problem domain including the difficulty of understanding the domain, the difficulty of functional requirements, non-functional requirements as well as the communication gap between the developer and the user and the external complexity. And the other element that we have looked into is the difficulty of managing development teams. And we have seen that complex software in spite of the use of the all different technology today, very high level language, reusability, modularity, decomposition. In spite of all of that, even a small component of a software goes well beyond the comprehension of individuals and therefore, it becomes software development has become a major activity in team development and team management. Several teams in several uh, corners of the world often and having different issues in interaction between themselves make it a real management challenge to keep unity and in uniformity of the design process. Now, let us look into the third element of uh, software uh, complexity that is flexibility through possible through software. Software is soft, it is flexible. Now, the first there are primarily three points which you should be sensitive about. The third one you are already aware I am sure, but the first point is if you just compare software development with civil construction. If a building has to be constructed, it needs components, it needs raw materials. Now, no civil construction vendor would start by planting trees so that timber can be used or by setting up a steel roll mill so that the steel can be used in casting the concrete and so on and so forth. What you will do? You will source your raw material from several other vendors and then just you will apply your expertise to construct. In software, this is a big problem. The problem is that the components of a software are software themselves. The components of the component are in turn again software and so on and so forth. So, at every point you are faced with the challenge of whether to build or to buy, whether to build or to borrow, whether to build or to steal. So, often it turns out that a team might end up building not only the software that the team needs to build, but it also builds a whole lot of components. Second point which you should understand is any field of engineering like civil construction, when they source the raw material there are several uniform building codes and standards which control the quality of the raw material. So, if you have to cast a cast a concrete, the kind of grain that the sands should have, the kind of casting strength your cement should have are all documented and fixed. Unless you adhere to those, you cannot construct. And therefore, when you take raw material, you will always check against those. In software, unfortunately, there are very few standards, really, really hardly any standard to check if a component is really usable, what is the reliability of a component that you are reusing and so on. So, the dimensions of flexibility add this major issue of component development becoming a part of the software development. The third point which all of us know is uh, if you consider you have a 100 story building, you would really even dream of going back to the builder and say that I need a new sub basement. That would be 
that would be a question which most people will laugh at because of the cost, because of risks, because of the difficulty of doing that whole thing. But in software similar requirements, you will very routinely ask for that. So, the fact that the software can be changed goes severely against the software that a product never can get remain stable and continue to deliver the goods that is required. So, this flexibility adds a lot of complexity to the whole process of software development. Finally, is the problem of characterizing the behavior of discrete systems which adds a lot of complexity. Initial computing systems were mechanical which were very simple. After electrical sciences came under our command and elementary electronics was possible, then we came up with a lot of computing which is known as analog computing, where basically you had analog systems doing the computation for you. But really the evolution of computing happened when we move to digital computers. That is, we do not have continuous value. So, if we if I throw a ball in air and track the trajectory, I would not expect the ball suddenly to start going high at the top of the height right? or suddenly start going straight. We will expect that ball to have a parabolic path, but if you are simulating that same process in your digital computer, it is quite possible that you will see this kind of behavior. Why does it happen? Why does it go that way? Because the software being built and executed by a digital system is modeled as a discrete event system. I will not go into the depth of what discrete event systems are. They are more of study of system dynamics. What it simply means that if we talk in terms of automata theory, it has got a finite set of states. And when it works, it simply changes from one state to the other. Very nice. So, actually in that way the things should have been simple, because an analog computing will have infinite number of states, but there are two difficulties. One, analog computing has strict mathematical model. If I try to compute the trajectory of the ball through analog means, I will use simple equations derived from Newton's laws and they will de define everything. But if I have to do it through digital means, I need a mathematics, I need tools which are very different from the some ordinary physical world laws and not all of those yet are very clearly understood. The second is of course, discrete systems have predefined well defined states, but if you consider a large application, then the application will have hundreds of thousands of variables and possibly in today's time multiple threads of control, multiple things can be happening at the same time. Given that the state of a system is the entire collection of these variables, the value that the variables has, the current address of each and every process, the current stack of each and every process and so on. So, even though in theoretical terms a software has finite number of states, yet many of these states are intractable. We just do not understand what these states are, how to enter into those states, what to do once your system gets into that state, how to get out of that. Even at times, it is very difficult to even identify that I have got into a state which is not where I want to be in. So, we take all those states together and say okay, this is this is where the software is not working, this is where the software is crashed, this is where we have an exception and so on and so forth. But the bottom line is there are several external factors which decide how your system tran makes transition between this large number of states and 
the total behavior of the resulting discrete system that we make as a software is never understood. The tools today do not exist for doing that. The skill does not exist with most of the developers to analyze them. So, it adds a several dimension of complexity to the software because of this behavior of discrete systems. So, these are the four different elements of software complexity. In this module, we have uh, started by trying to understand the difference between limited use personal kind of software and industrial strength software. And then, we have take a tour of the four fundamental elements, which make software complex. That is the complexity that arise from the problem domain, from the communication gap, the external complexity, the complexity that arise due to the difficulty of managing big teams, which need to be managed. They are the machines of software development. The flexibility that the software offers is the strength of the software, but we have seen why that adds to the complexity of software development. And finally, the software being a discrete system, the behavior of the discrete system adds a new dimension to the complexity of software. So, having understood this, we will stop now. In the next module, we will come up and start understanding about what the structure of complex systems typically are and how to manage those complexities.